Someone say he's my savior. He's and my savior. Say, he's my savior. My savior. My savior. How long? Forever and ever. And so every day, Lord, I give you all of me. And so that means that your day has to start. See, your day starts by saying, Jesus, I give you all of me today. I mean, I mean, it, I, I just, I'm telling you, in the morning time, you know, you know, you know, if you job now, your job is well different. I understand that, but begin your day by saying, you know, Lord, I, I surrender. Lord, we're holding nothing. Lord, you have everything I have. You, 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 you're in charge of everything. And when you do that prayer commitment, oh my goodness. Well, because see, this job, as your shepherd, notice, is to feed and to lead. Your job as sheep is to swallow and follow. <laughs> he's gonna feed, you're gonna swallow. He's gonna lead, you know, praise us. I mean, he's gonna feed, you're gonna swallow. He's gonna lead, you're gonna follow. And you do that every day. He said, Lord, take everything, Lord. If it's not of you, Lord, I don't, Lord, I don't want it. I don't want it at all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning, good morning. Praise good morning. the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. I tell you, I mean, that song, right? It moves me. <laughs> Woo! You know, and, and so, you know, when I say, Lord, I take all of me, and Lord said, now, if he take all of me, I want to take all of him too. Praise the Lord. He said, I want to give you everything. See, withholding nothing. And Lord says, okay, now Ronnie, if you're going to withhold nothing, I'm not going to hold anything for you as well. I'm going to give you everything you need, praise the Lord, uh, to be a blessing, to, be, to walk in righteousness, you know, uh, uh, to be compassionate. Everything you need is like, I want to lavish it for you. Can you imagine that? Praise the Lord. And I want to tell you, hey, that's a pretty good deal. I give him everything. He give me everything. <laughs> Woo! Listen, you can't lose to that. Glory to God. You walk in victory every day in your life. And so listen, hey, you watch this on Facebook, say good morning, good morning, good morning. You say, what is, what's going on? I tell you, Holy Ghost revival going on here at House of Faith Christian Center. Hallelujah, we have a party. And we found out that listen, ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Hallelujah! So you have a listen. You have Holy Ghost part of Jesus all by yourself. But listen, thank you again for being a part of our worship experience. We're just so glad that you've taken out your busy schedule uh, to be a part of this. So all of our Facebook family, friends, and social media. Thank you, thank you again. Welcome to House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord, and we have an awesome time in the Lord. I tell you, the Lord and God, and uh, uh, we want you to go ahead and hit a like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. Contact all your family members, your co-workers, uh, your friends, your social media affiliates, uh, all people that you know, just let them know how the Faith Christian Center, we are live and we are on the air, praise the Lord, and we say welcome, welcome, welcome to the House of Faith Christian Center. So we're going to get into the Word in a few minutes, and uh, but also at the end of the service, we're going to be having a look, Holy Communion, and uh, we want you to go ahead and get your bread and get your juice and prepare to break bread with us for Holy Communion, and it's going to be so good, and we thank God. But listen, I just want you to have that prayer, Lord, take all of me. Lord, just take all of me. Lord, withholding nothing because I know, Lord, you don't want to hold, hold anything for me as your son and as your daughter in Jesus' name. Amen. Are y'all ready for the word this morning? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That word was so good on last Sunday on Resurrection Day. Praise the Lord. But I want to tell you, in, in, in case you forgot, Jesus is still alive. Huh? Hallelujah. He ain't went back to that grave. He's still living today. And I'm excited about Jesus. So listen, uh, you're going to make sure you get your pen and paper per prepared to make some good copious notes. It's going to be so awesome in the name of Jesus. And again, go ahead and like and in share, like and in share. So let's go ahead and get our Bibles out. Praise the Lord. Whether you have your Bibles on printed text, whether you have it on electronic, you have it on your iPhone, your iPod, your iPad, your iRod, it's going to be so awesome. So let's go ahead and pull up our Bibles. Let's make this confession of our faith. If you would, say these many words. This is my Bible. This is my, this my Bible. Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I'm now ready. I'm now ready. Ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive. To receive. The dynamic. The dynamic. The powerful. The powerful. The ever-increasing. The ever-increasing. The life-changing. The life 
Jane. Word of God. Word of God. My mind is alert. My mind's alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. I boldly confess. I boldly confess. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I boldly boldly confess. I boldly boldly confess. I'll never never be the same. I'll never never be the same. I boldly 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 confess. I boldly 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 confess. After hearing God's word today. After hearing God's word today. I'll never 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 be the same. I will never 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 be the same. For the kingdom. For the the kingdom. And mine's the kingdom. And mine's the kingdom. For the power. For the the power. And mine's the power. And mine's the power. For the glory. For the the glory. And mine's the glory. And mine's the glory. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. For this is my receiving day. My receiving day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This story that I end out right now. Again, in this year, God's grace for an open door 2024. Praise the Lord. Uh, the scripture that God has given us, Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8. And I'm reading this from the New Living Translation again in Revelation at chapter 3, verse 28. Listen to these words of Jesus now. He's speaking uh, to John the Revelator. John the Revelator was on the Isle of Atmos. He's been banished because of his testimony uh, concerning Jesus. And uh, notice what Jesus speaks to him. Jesus says this. He says, now write this to the church in Philadelphia. He says, I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door that's before you that no one can close. He says, you have little strength, yet you have obeyed my word and did not deny me. Praise the Lord. Now, today I want to uh, um, look at the subject entitled, now we're gonna talk about open doors, principles for an open door. Principles for an open door, part one. And uh, we got about two more messages on this, maybe more uh, that the Lord wants to speak because again, I want you to get this visualized of this open door uh, that God praise the Lord. So open door in 2024. Now let's look at our introduction. And I want you to listen because this statement is very, very powerful. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's life changing if you get a revelation of this. It says, when we begin to survey our lives, we suddenly realize that when it boils down and get to the very basic reality, I want you to think about this, life simply boils down to doors. Everybody say doors. Doors. Now, every day of our lives, and think about it, we are dealing with doors. Mm. And all of us, listen to me now, are attempting to get the right door open. What kind of doors? Door right. Opportun right, that's right, the right door, the, the right door. You don't go to the wrong door, the right <laughs> door. So there are opportunity doors, there are promotional doors, there are breakthrough doors, there are advancement doors, there are new territory doors, even they're what we call new season doors. Everybody say doors. doors. And listen, even in the midst of tough and difficult times, we are faced with doors. I've discovered that one of the challenges we face as followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we must discern the type of door we are facing. Hallelujah. So again, life is under door. And, and you have to choose the correct door that you have. So what I wanted to do, I want to deal with today and, and next Sunday, I want to deal with seven principles of an open door. And again, and I want you to let the Spirit of God just speak to you. The Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear. And so again, I want you to think about life is nothing but door. That's all it is. You open up in the morning, morning time, you get up, you know, you gotta choose what kind of door you're gonna have. And doors are there for us. So let's look at some principles about some open doors. We wanna hit this, we wanna share some things with you. We'll be a blessing, praise the Lord. And again, we wanna finish all today. We'll get some on next time and, and uh, we'll finish up as well. But I want you to see, life is nothing but a, a series of doors that you face. Okay, and just like doors in the morning time, as you get up, you know, you get up in the morning time, you know, uh, let's say you go maybe through, through 
bathroom door, you go through the closet door to get things. You open up a drawer, a, a door to your drawer, then you go into the kitchen, and uh, you know you go to the kitchen, you open up a cabinet door, then you go maybe to the refrigerator, open up a refrigerator door. Uh, uh, you go fix something to eat, you know, you put in the microwave door. You know, all kind of doors that that you have, and then you come out of your house. You know, you come out of the back door, the front door. You know, you have a garage, you open up the garage door, and then you get in the car, you get into the car door, and then you drive over here, and you come out, you get out of the car, you come downstairs and you have a front door that you come through and then you come through it you maybe go through another door and then you come upstairs you come through the door so again that's doors there's decisions that you make concerning doors that you have so let's look at these principles number one and this i, I started with this on purpose because this is something that I, I i i wanted to find out you know what's the first mention of the word door in the bible and it's very interesting once, that's principle number one, understand that some doors are dangerous and destructive. And listen, these doors can lead us to sin and they come from Satan who is our enemy. So I, I want to find out, okay, what is the first mention of the word door in the Bible? It's in Genesis chapter 4. So let's turn your Bibles quickly to Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to verse 8 and read this from the New King James Version. If I say door. Door. So again, the first door, I want you to realize that there are some doors that are dangerous and they are very destructive for you as a believer. It says, now Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Verse 2. Then she bore again, this time his, his brother Abel. It says, now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Verse 3. And then the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And verse 4 says, Abel also brought uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Abel also brought the first firstborn of the flock and their fat. And the Lord, the this, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Verse 5. He says, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Verse six, so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Oh my goodness, why are you angry? He says, why has your countenance fallen? Now verse seven says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, Watch this. Sin lies at the what? Door. Door. Sin lies at the what? Door. Sin lies at the what? Door. At the door. And it's desire. Watch this now. Is for you, but you shall rule over it. In verse 8. He says, Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Mm. Oh my goodness. So we have here, remember, Adam and Eve were in the garden. They had everything they needed. And God told Adam, he says, now every tree you may eat of it, but the tree of the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil of the fruit you will not eat. And then the Bible says that, that the serpent came and talked to Eve, you know, and, and told Eve, he says, now, has God put every fruit here for you not to eat? And she said, yeah, I can eat, but we can't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, uh, and, and uh, Satan says, you know, the reason why is because God knows that when you do this, you'll be like him, you know? And the Bible says, she, you know, she took the fruit and she saw it. They would make her wise, she ate of it, and then she gave it to her husband, and then he ate of it. And there, so we see what happens is Adam and Eve did hit high treason there in the garden. They disobeyed God. And so what happened was this, God did several things. You know, he, he, he put a curse upon them. Uh, he also banished them, but he told them also, he cursed the ground that they ate of it. And he told them things that they would continue, they would we do. And so they continued to live, but then they began to start having children. And so the Bible says, and, and Adam knew his wife, or Adam had what sexual relationship with, with, with his wife, 
and the boy's son and the first son by the name of Cable, uh, uh, Cain. And Cain said, you know, the word means that he comes from the Lord. But then there's also a son by the name of Abel, all right? Now, Abel, the younger son, was a shepherd. He took care of sheep. That was his vocation. And Cain was a farmer. He took the, the ground. And the Bible says it came to pass that they offered an offering unto the Lord. But here's the thing about it is, God accepted Abel's offering, but he did not have respect for Cain's offering. And you say, well, why did not? Well, there could be several reasons. Some say the reason why is because uh, Abel gave the first, the very best he gets to God, and, and Cain did not give his very best, so, so God had respect for Abel. Some says that uh, uh, Abel gave his offering out of faith, you know, because we know that the Bible says, uh, without faith it's impossible to please God. And evidently, Cain offering was not based on faith. So we don't know exactly. But for some reason, God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's offering. All right? And the Bible says this. It says, verse 5 says, he, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. He says, and, and, and Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. One translation says that he was dejected. He was uh, uh, dejected. He, he, he went into this period of mental anguish that his countenance changed, his whole demeanor changed. And he became so angry. And, and verse 6 says, and says, says, why have your countenance fallen? He says, why are you so angry? Somebody say, okay, how did God know he's angry? Because he had an angry heart. I would listen to point number one. Cain was mad at God. He was angry, first of all, at God. But, and you know, and why? Because he did not obey God. Evidently, God had given us the man to bring a certain type of offering unto the Lord, and Cain didn't do that. And because of his disobedience, it caused an anger to boil over in him. See, there are people today who walk around, they got so much anger, you can sit on the face. Why is that? It's because they fail to follow what God has told them to do. And, and they're mad at God. And, and really, and then what happens is because they can't get, you know, they get mad at God, they've got to now take it off on somebody else. Come on, somebody, all right? See, people who are angry at you, they're not really angry at you. They're just taking it out on you. But they're really angry at God. And why? Because here it is, they are doing something because God told them to do something and they failed to do it. And now their consequences are coming. And so they can't see God, so now they got to see somebody around them. And they begin to look at, they begin to look up they begin to look out, but they begin, they fail to look within. And that anger was building up in Cain. He said, I can't believe this. God rejected my offering unto him. But not only that, he says, but he received the offering of my brother. And so now that anger that he had within not only did it go up, but it also went out to touch people that are angry. See, I, I just found out, you know, people who are angry all the time, how can I say this in a nice way? It's a God problem. It's, it's a God problem. And, and when it becomes a God problem, then jealousy, come on now, and envy begins to fester within that person, but really it's a God problem. And they can't understand. But the reason is they need to go to God and get the situation straight with God first and say, God, why am I feeling this? God, why do I have this anger? God, why do I get upset all the time? You know, but people don't do that. But what they want to do is they will look at other people and say, You're the reason why I'm angry. You're the reason why things are not working. You're the reason why I fall in fear. But listen, it's not the person, it's a God situation. 
Hallelujah. And everybody said amen. Amen. Well, say out to one, all right? <laughs> and so God says, why are you so angry? Has your countenance fallen? Why is your countenance fallen? You, you, you feel dejected. You need to take care of your own business. And he says this, he says, listen, if you do well, will you not be accepted? So evidently there was something he was not doing well. And I believe what it is, he was not walking by faith. Because listen, every time you walk by faith, you always gonna do well. Hallelujah, glory to God. See, it's a faith walk. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But listen, I mean, I see it with my physical eyes, but listen, I have faith in a God who will never lie, a God who will always be there for me, a God I can trust in, and so therefore, I put my faith in him. But what happens is, when people don't put their faith in it, they can't please God. And when you don't please God, then what happens is, anger has a right to come to you. Hallelujah. That's why you pass by you know, how to get it. I say, because I want to I, I, I please God. Now, how can I want to please God and be angry all the time? Like, you, you, you can't do it. You know? And so he says, why you? Now, verse 7. Verse seven, he says, if you do not do well, he says, sin lies at the what? No. Sin lies at the what? No. One translation says, sin, it crouches at the door. It, it, sin is waiting for an opportunity to take advantage of you. It's, it's, at the, it's right at the door. And, and, and what, what, why is it waiting at the door? Because, listen to me now, sin knows when you don't, listen to me now, sin knows when you don't trust God, it, it has a right to come and do anything it wants to do. Um, I want you to think about this. I want you to think every time you sin. When you sin at that particular time, you're not trusting God. I want you to think about it, okay? Yeah. See, every time I sin, I'm gonna talk about me because I'll talk about you, you get mad at me, all right? <laughs> See, when I sin of overeating, I'm not trusting God that there'll be food for tomorrow. <laughs> Because I'm going to eat it all up. Lord, I'm going to eat it all now because they, 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 this, this breakfast, I, I'm going to eat because there may not be no lunch. <laughs> well, let me give you another this. Lord, listen, the reason why I'm going to speak him out or talk about him is because I don't trust you that you're going to take care of him. So therefore, I don't want to be taken advantage of. And I'm not going to let anybody take advantage of me. So I'm going to tell them just how I feel it. I'm talking about you've got this. When you're not trusting God, you have a right, you have an opportunity for sin to be at your door. And there's waiting for an opportunity to trust you, to jump on you. And so, therefore, when you go to something and say, God, I trust you. Somebody say, God, I trust you. God, I trust See, you. God, I may not understand it, but God, I trust you. God, I may not agree with it, but God, I trust you. God, I mean, I see the, the end, but God, I trust you. And this, and so when you trust in God in every situation that you face, then what happens is sin cannot come against you. But once you let your God down and say, God, okay, in this situation, I'm not going to trust you, so sin now can go. And that's what God simply says. God says, listen, sin lies at your door, and it is desire for you. What translation says is for to, to take advantage of you and to destroy you. It's waiting. Some of y'all, I'm telling you right now, it's waiting for you to leave here today. Just waiting for you. Yeah, you listen to Pastor Simmons. Yeah, but you know, see, that message is only for Pastor Simmons, only for Pastor Taylor, only for preacher. It's not for you. Good God, God knows you. God knows you have need. God knows you get human. See, sin is waiting for an opportunity. But you can say, no! God, I trust you. And God, I have faith in you. And God, I have confidence in you. Well, in your word. Praise the Lord. You know, and, and so it's a time when you shall rule over it. Well, guess what? You have a capability to seduce sin anytime it comes. Why? Because you trust God. There's never been a situation where a person sin and didn't trust God. You want to write that down? Write it down. Every time a person sin, it's because at that moment they're not trusting God. 
I don't care what it is. Why? Because sin separates you from God. I don't care what it is. Whether it's sin in your body, sin in your spirit, sin with your mouth, sin with your attitude, sin of your body, it doesn't matter. At that particular time, you give in to sin because at that time, you're not trusting God. And so what you've got to simply say is, whenever sin is lurking at your door, whenever temptation comes, you got to say, God, listen, i got to trust you right now. When Jesus was tempted in the garden, in the wilderness, I mean, tempted. And every time Satan came, he says, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus says, I got to trust God. And when I trust God, I'll say what God says. And God says, listen, man shall not live by bread alone, but may the word be seen in the mouth of God. So when I know I'm trusting God, I say what God says. How do I know I'm trusting God? Because I say what God says. I'm going to tell you, say, listen, you start saying what God says every temptation comes. Listen, sin will not overcome you. I don't care what the situation. Because sin wants to take advantage of you. When you trust God, God wants to give you an advantage. And you have the capability, ladies and gentlemen, to overcome anything that comes to your life. You can have joy in the midst of your temptation. Why? Because you trust God. But do you have a word? Yes, yeah, because the Bible says, joy of the Lord is strength. And so when that thing comes, I say, I got joy in my eyes. I got joy in my life. Pastor, you, you got joy? Yeah, because God said so. Why? Because I'm trusting God. And therefore, sin lines up. But when I don't trust God, look what happens. It can overcome. So every day, the king didn't trust God because of what verse 8 said. He says, Now Cain talked with his Abel, his brother, and it came to pass. And when they were in the field, the king rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Mm -hmm. Now, question Did Cain trust God? Mm -mm. Sin was lying at the door. It was like a, like a, uh, you see these pictures of these lions, they hide in a bush and they're waiting for their prey to come, so forth and all. And they crouch down and they just look. They just wait. Oh, they just wait. You know, and soon, soon the time comes, they spring up and they get their prey. But see, that's what sin is going to do to you, right there. Sin is looking for an opportunity to come to take advantage of you. But listen, through God's word, God wants to give you the advantage. How do he give you the advantage? Through his word. And every day you got to start saying what God's word says. Look at James chapter 1. Look at James chapter 1. So I'm talking about when sin lies at your door and there's some doors that are dangerous for you. So how do I do, Pastor? When that door comes, you know, and you know, insane destruction. Don't you know he brings the same stuff over you over and over again? Isn't that new? Some of you get some of the same stuff. Not new, same stuff over and over again. But you see, I just believe when you get this word, that this that stuff is gonna be over. That you're gonna slam the door open, on, you know, and they may be the line and say, you know what, I'm not gonna open that door. No, because every time I open that door, I get fear. Every time I do, I get frustrated. Every time I do, I get guilt. Every time I open that door, I get condemned. Condemn. I condemn myself. I beat myself up, you know, and I'm tired of opening up that door. I'm going to close that door once and forever. No, no, Satan, you won't come. That one door is just coming in this time. Why is this? Because this verse says this. It says, watch this. He says, therefore, lay aside. You lay aside all filthiness. Watch this. And overflow of wickedness. So there's things you got to lay aside. Things you got to work on yourself. All those sins may be laying at that particular door. Listen, you're going to lay aside of all of that. All the filthiness, all the junk, all the envy, all the jealousy, all the anger, all the guilt, all the condemnation. See, you lay aside all of that. You put it aside and you speak it. Sin, I lay aside you. Jealousy, I lay aside you. Frustration, I lay aside of you. Anger, I lay aside of you. Guilt, I lay aside. I put it down. I open it up, and you will not rule me. Because listen, if you don't talk to him, guess what? It's going to talk to you, and it'll continue to play games and mind games in your mind all the time. So you got to say, say, no, 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 no. I lay this aside. I lay it down. Jesus Christ died two thousand years ago. Give you the power to lay it down. So, number one, I lay aside something and I receive with meekness 
the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Now, what's the implanted word? Anybody remember what John chapter 1, verse 1 says? In the beginning was the what? Word. In the beginning was the what? Word. So that word through Jesus has been, listen to me now, has been implanted inside of you. And so I received Jesus. I received what he said. I received what he taught. I received what he commanded. I received what he did for me. I received his promises. I received that. I received Jesus. You who, who came to give me life to have a but say, I received you, and guess what? It will save my soul. And when Jesus doesn't save your soul, guess what? Stuff at the door, it won't come against you. Now, how do now here's your question. How do I know I received Jesus? The planet word. How do I know it? Look at verse 22. What's the next? Tell me verse 22. What it says. But be ye what? Doers of the word. And not what? Hearers only. See, you can say, Pastor Simmons, that was the best sermon I ever heard. Woo! Woo! Preacher, you pastor, you preach to it, okay? And then someone come and cut you off. <laughs> All the way home from church. Alright? And Pastor Simmons just got through preaching about forgiveness. Alright? And you listen, you make a U-turn. <laughs> like you gonna do something, all right? And you chase them all the way down San Francisco Parkway, all right? And you and you get by them, and you know, and you let out a few words <laughs> that you know not right. Well, you just heard a good sermon, but you see, you didn't do the word. Watch this. When you hear, listen to me now. When you hear the word and don't do it, the Bible says you're deceiving yourself. You're fooling yourself. And so you have to make an assertive effort that whatever you hear, you're gonna do. So guess what? So when sin comes lurking at your door, whatever it is, whether it's in your spirit, whether it's in your soul, whether it's in your body, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your relationship, what it is, then what happens is, so you got to speak, listen, sin, I trust God. See, I, I, I trust God. And that's the first way that you start doing the word, by saying the word. God, listen, I say the word. And see, what happens is, see, you can hear me saying, Listen to me now. And the Lord showed me this. I was reading the Bible one time, and I was reading the New Testament. And I got this revelation. Jesus says that whenever I say something, now listen to me now. He says, whenever I say something, Ronnie, he said, that's my faith. Every time you read the New Testament, that's Jesus' faith. He said, but watch this. He says, but when you say it, it now becomes your faith. Some of y'all don't get it, right? See, you can hear what I'm preaching and preaching every Sunday. You can take notes. Listen, you can have your highlighted Bible all passed and so forth and all. But until my words start getting into your mouth and start saying what I say, it only becomes my faith. But what you start saying when I say, now becomes your faith. And when it becomes your faith, you're trusting God and you're pleasing God. And the Bible says our faith is false to please God. And when you please God, guess what? So through the power of God, the sin that's lying on your door, it'll never touch you. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so that's why now God is, just, I mean, in, in the air, I'm just using an example, you know, about overeating. So when I, I said, oh, Lord, I said, I'm full. I thank you, Lord, that you're supplying all my needs, Father, and, and you just supplied my need by eating. So, Lord, I don't need to eat my third grade. <laughs> I'm going to use that example, okay? Because if I don't say that, then sin will lie at the door and just wait for me, you know? And, and, and it start tempting me and all kind of things and before I do it because I don't trust God and say what God says, it'll happen. Hallelujah. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I got this down here. It says that this door should remind us how easy the enemy can desire us when we do not keep our heart guarded against temptation. How do I guard my heart? By saying what Jesus says. Every time. Say what the word of God says. 
speaking God's word says over and over and over again. And that's how you begin to guard your heart and sin will come. Sin will happen to Cain. See, if he, if, he, listen, if he said what God says, he says, you know what, God, listen, next time I have an offering, I'm going to give you my very best. God, listen, uh, 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 I'm going to give this offering based on faith. And it's not about my brother Abel. God, it's about you. I'm not going to look at Abel. I'm going to look at you. If he done that, praise the Lord, he never would killed his brother. But what happens is, see, when you don't trust God, you begin to look at other people. Think about it. Mm. Look what they got. Mm. Look at those clothes they got. Mm. I wonder how they got them. Look at that car they got. Mm. They think they suck. All of those thoughts are coming. Why? But instead of looking at them, you need to look at him and say, God, I thank you. That God, if you bless them, you can bless me too. See? And you know. See, one of the sins that people get in trouble with is comparing themselves with other people. That's a big sin. You compare with somebody else because you think they got more than what you have. But number one, listen. Number one, you don't know what they did to get what they had. Come on now. And, and, and secondly, listen. What, what does it matter in any type of way? I mean, I mean, they, I, some of the people in who has the man, that sure is sharp. Man, you paid a whole lot of money. Oh, somebody just sold it to me. Well, guess what? I got it on sale. <laughs> <laughs> they gave it away. So stop looking at what somebody else has mm -hmm. and keep your. I don't say this. See, because again, that door, listen now, that door, it wants to take advantage of you and make you miserable and, 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 and talk about what you don't have, what you can't do, whatever. No, God wants to open up every door of goodness to you. So therefore, sin will have to lie the door. And everybody say amen. Amen. Praise amen. But that's easy. I, I can go through the other one real quick. Number two, when God opens the door, opposition and adversaries may appear. Okay, God's opened this door and it's going to be so easy to tell me, Clay, not necessarily so. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. Now this is Paul. Uh, he's writing uh, to the church at Corinth. And uh, he's in Ephesus. And, and he wanted to come to Corinth, but you know, he stayed in Ephesus. And he tells the region why he wants to stay in Ephesus, why he's not come yet. He says, this, he says, for a great effective door has opened to me, watch this, and there are many adversaries. So just because God opens the door, that doesn't mean there'll be some opposition. I want you to see this now, okay? Just because God opens the door doesn't mean everything is gonna be just so sweet and you won't deal with anything whatsoever. No! There are many doors that God has opened up for me. Praise the Lord, I went through the door and guess what, the opposition was waiting for me, all right? And some of you, when God opened the door, you see opposition, you ready to turn around and go back. <laughs> and God, like, where you going? Oh, God, I ain't going to there. Why not? Well, see, they don't like me. He said, that's why I'm behind the door for you. So you can show them how good I am, and it's not about you, it's about me. And just because people don't agree with you, just because people don't like you, just because people don't accept you, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad door. Because the Bible says, listen, a great effective door, that means if I go through the door, I'll have great effect. I know when God opened up the door uh, for me to uh, become a position I have, you know, with, with, with school, you know, and start dealing, you know, with 14, 15, 16, 70 year olds. I mean, my goodness. Woo, how times have changed. <laughs> my goodness. I mean to tell you, you know, it, you know, no yes ma'am and no yes sir and uh, oh, what you want? How are you? Oh, Jesus, you know. And I said, oh, help me Jesus. Now, Jesus, you gave me a position, so forth and all, you know, and uh, Jesus, I'm not ready for a prison ministry yet. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus, if you don't help me, somebody will get hurt. 
and I've heard of her. <laughs> and, she, and the Spirit of God wisdom has given me and says, now, I want you to be a fan. He said, because a lot of them, they don't have, they didn't come from families like you came from. And they don't have the advantage you have. He says, and really they just need to be respected and loved. He says, so I want you to show love and respect to them. And and, and, and I started showing love, respect to them, the type of way, you know, uh, I, I, I was firm, but I was fair. Yeah. And now, this is all crazy. There's some who purposely try to get in trouble so they can come to my class. <laughs> purpose, Miss Simmons, I'm, I'm gonna skip so I can come get your class. No, don't do that. Because, Miss Simmons, when I'm in your class, I mean, I get my work done, it's quiet, you treat me with dignity, you treat me with respect, so I'm gonna get in trouble. I said, no, I don't do that, we, we gotta go out there and But God was showing me, right, you can be effective, you know? And, and he gave me effective, you know, about every day is a good day. We're from Marvin's Monday, Tripping Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thank you, Thursday, Fantastic Friday. I've been getting effective. And so now they come in, they know what kind of day we're gonna have. It won't be a bad day. We don't have bad day. We don't have disrespectful day. We don't have contrary day. We have good day. And one person can be effective if you understand, Lord, I put you first, so God will open up a door. So just because you get a little opposition, don't turn around and go back out that door. You get a new job, you get permission. Listen, people may not like it. That's okay. You're there to represent God. You're there to be an ambassador for Jesus. You don't represent yourself. And stop taking it personally. Again, when people don't like you, it's not about them, it's about it's just with God. You just have to be there. And God, is, if he didn't think you could handle it, he never would give you through that door. And those people said, the Lord know how much we can bear. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, I got this here. Uh, when a great door opens that will lead to effective work, the enemy comes to oppose us. We must be aware that when a door opens, in addition, we must be aware, now watch this, when the enemy is actually the enemy. Oh. See, sometimes we think the enemy sometimes is without. Sometimes the enemy is the enemy. Sometimes we're dealing with things that we need to get delivered for, and that enemy, we have done with that. In other words, you know, uh, self confidence. You know, I'm not trying to make brag, I'm just have self confidence that you represent the king. And then when you have that self confidence, then you go to the door, then what do you think people are out to get you? And every time you see people gather together and talking, you think they're talking about you. But I, said, I saw them and they was talking about me. They don't even know you. How do you talk about knowing you know you? And so why? Because you're so insecure. And so, so you got to get delivered from that, and you got to say that Psalms, I mean, in, in, in Philippians chapter 4, uh, 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 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And God has allowed me to go through that door to represent Him. So stop selling yourself short. Stop saying what you can't do. Stop saying what you can't have. You represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you got to do that in the review. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 to verse 13. Even the Apostle Paul, who wrote half, this is now, I got to preach this, who wrote half the New Testament, he had to deal with an issue within himself. What? Yes, he did. I'm going to show you. <clears throat> now, this is Paul writing. And he's writing to these, this, to, uh, uh, he's talking about his experiences that he had to the church at Corinth. He says, listen, he says, furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, watch this, a door, if I say a door, a door. And watch this, he says, a door was opened to me by who? The Lord. The Lord opened up a door to me to preach this gospel, to preach this good news. But well, watch the next verse. It says what? He says, I had no rest in my spirit because I did not find Titus, my brother, but taking leave of them, I departed for Macedonia. Now, God had opened up a door for the Apostle Paul to preach the gospel and the good news. He says, but guess what? He says, listen, I was troubled in my spirit. I was anxious. There are some things I had no rest. I think one translation says, no rest in my spirit. What was happening was, 
some things happened in him. See, it was not so much the end, listen to me now, it was not so much the enemy that was without, it was the enemy that was within. And listen, my friends, when you don't have rest in your spiritual thing, it's going to be very tough for you to go through a door that God has opened. And listen, the Apostle Paul, he wouldn't even go through that door. Why? Because he was anxious. He was anxiety. He had fear. Some things going inside of him. Well, I thought he's a man of God. Yes, but also he still was a man. And see, if this is if you don't take advantage of what God is doing and you start letting your emotions, because this is over now, you let your emotions take control of you. I'm talking to somebody now. You let your soul shrimp start coming. You start talking. Listen, people start saying things about you. Then you have no rest in your spirit and you're not putting your confidence in the finished works of Jesus. And the Bible says, guess what? He couldn't even stay there because he had no rest. Wow. See, I'm talking about many times the inner me is the inner me. My friend, you ask yourself this question, is it anything that I'm not resting in? Is it a thing I'm anxious? Is it something that continues to bother me? Is something that continues to frustrate me? Is something that continues to get a hold of me? And Jesus has opened up a door, and many times you won't go to that door because you're dealing with some stuff inside. And I say, I don't want nothing to stop me from going through that open door. Hallelujah. What I think, what I feel, what I see, I don't want that at all, Jesus. When you open up a door, Jesus, I'm ready to go through because I know it's you and I know there's great work for me to do for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then the last one. Oh, I like this one. The last one is that hard and persistent knocking may be required to open some doors. Wow. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Now, I read the scriptures, y'all, every day. Every day I read Matthew 7, 7. And when I started making this mission, the Spirit of God spoke to me and gave me a revelation that I've never seen before concerning about open doors. Hmm. Notice we can read it together. Let's read verse 7 together. Ready? Let's read. Ask, and, and it will be given, given to you. Seek, and, and you will, will find. Knock, and, and it will, will be open to you. Let's read again. Everybody just read me. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. And I've really been reading that for you. I've been reading that for years. I've been reading it. And God showed me something that I've never seen before. God was sharing with me. He said, Ronnie, I want to show you a progression. A progression. He says, the first thing that you need, you need something for me, the first thing I want you to do as, is to ask. Okay? I said, Lord, okay. And, 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 and some of us, we, we come to, all of us sometimes, we come to the Lord and then, okay, we ask the Lord, Lord, I I would like this, Lord, I, I would like this, and Lord, I would like this. And that's what we do, we ask. He says, but Ronnie, do you always, listen to me now. He says, so when you don't get it right then, you need to go to the second progression. You ask, he says, now you need to start seeking. See, because see, if I ask and I get it, it's over with. Okay, see, Lord, I ask you a raise, you get the raise, that's it, all right? He says, but what happens is, when I don't, when I ask and don't get it right now, he says, you need to go to the, y'all listen to me now, you need to go to the second progression, the second level, he says, you need to start seeking. You know, and he says, you're not gonna see some things. Seeking some things that you know maybe uh, not going well. Seeking some things that you know that uh, I, I I may be saying to you, you know, seeking some things about you know, do you really want this or not? You know, and I said, oh yeah, 
He said, so he says, you go to the second level of start seeking, you start searching, you start inquiring more, you start getting to think and find out, do you really want this? Is it really for you? All right? And I said, yeah, Lord, I really want it. Lord, I believe this is you. I, I, I truly believe this is you, Lord. So for the law. He said, no, mommy. If you asked and you didn't get it. If you seek and you didn't get it. He said, no, this is what I need for you to do. He says, I want you to start knocking. Now, uh, I can say it anyway. When Levi comes to our, 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 our door, our bedroom door, we thought of this, okay? He started knocking. And the next thing he says is, can I come in? He just don't come in. We taught him that. Now, he did it one time. He don't do it anymore, all right? I, I took care of that, all right? But now, every time he comes in, he knocks. Why? Because he knows that when he knocks, he wants to come into our presence. He knows that on the outside, he cannot get what he wants. So he has to make a knocking gesture and that knocking gesture will allow him to come in into our presence to see us. And once he sees us, then he can get whatever he needs and what he requires. And the Lord showed me this. He says, Ronnie, he says, there are times you've asked and you didn't get it. He says, there's times you saw and you didn't get it. And I want to see how bad you really want it. Because if you want it real, real bad, you won't stop just asking. You won't stop just seeking. Listen, you'll stop knocking. And you'll stop knocking because what you want to do is you want to get into my presence. And when you get into my presence, come on, somebody. I've got everything that you need. And there are certain things, praise the Lord, we can only get it, get it from the Lord when we get into his presence. Because the Bible says, in his presence is fullness of joy and his right hand pleasures every morning. And in your presence, that's where you belong. And the Lord says, I've got a door that you need to get into my presence. And once you get into my presence, and once you continue to look upon me and begin to meditate about how good God is, and that's why I tell you, my friends, every morning, you want to make sure if you can, get on your knees and bow down. Why? Because you're showing the Lord that you adore him. You're showing the Lord you acknowledge him. You're showing the Lord you love him. And say, Lord, I want to get into your presence. That's why. When you're into the Lord's presence, what's happening? You knock. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, look at Acts chapter 12. I'm going to close out. Oh, it's so good. Lord, show me that. And I want to tell you that I've seen things start happening like I've never seen before. Why? Because I started knocking at the door, and the Lord said, come on and get into my presence. And there's certain things you can get from the Lord only when you get into his presence. You can ask, you can see, but he says, are you willing to knock? See, that's why a lot of times people pray and get answered, and people pray and don't get answered. There's so, some of you who've been knocking, and you're knocking, and you're knocking, and you won't stop, you won't give up. I don't care how you feel, you keep on knocking. I don't care how, how you're going through, you keep on knocking. I don't care what it looks like, you keep on knocking. And he said, Lord, I won't stop until I get into your presence. That's what knocking does. Knocking at the door allowed the Lord to open up that door so you get his presence. He said, come on in. <laughs> now, here's a story that you close out here. Simon Peter had been placed in the jail prison by Herod. Herod frequently had killed James. And the Bible says that Herod saw that it pleased the Jews. So he took Peter and had him arrested. However, it was the days of the Passover and so forth. He was going to have Peter to be executed the next day. But the Bible says an angel came. <laughs> Hallelujah. And miraculously, listen to me. You read that chapter. You read that chapter. Acts chapter 12. 
this miraculously. Somebody say, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. <laughs> I mean, you just praise the Lord. There's a door of miracles waiting for some of you today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You just got to increase your faith. You just can't give up on God. Praise the Lord. And then angel came and released Simon from the jailers, released him from the 16 soldiers. Praise the Lord. Opened up the door, opened the gate, opened miraculously. And he was free. And he went out and he went to Mary's house where they were praying. And your Bible says, in verse 13, he says, and as Peter knocked at the door, God, if I say knock at the door. Knock, knock, Hallelujah! He knocked at the door of the gate. He says, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. And when she recognized Peter boys, because of her gladness, listen, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate of the door. Verse 13. But they said to her, now they've been praying. Come on, somebody. Been praying. We prayed and we prayed. We prayed all night long. Been praying. What are they praying for? To release our pastor. Let him go. So now here's Peter showing up. God answered their prayers. And notice, they said, You are crazy. This is East Nash, right? You crazy. But she kept on insisting that it was so. So they said it is his angel. Hallelujah. And so Peter turned around and went back home. Huh? Peter gave up. Peter said they won't let me in. Peter said it's cold out there. Peter said it's hard. No. Glory to God. What the Bible says, he said. Peter, he did what? He did what? Continue knocking. How long did he knock? He knocked. He knocked until when? Talk to me now. He he knocked until when? To the door open. He knocked until when? To the door open. The door open. And God stopped out of letting me know. Praise the Lord. Listen, some of you have been praying. Some of you have been seeking. Some of you have been asking. But God said, listen, you keep on. You keep on knocking at the door. Hallelujah. It may not open the first time. It may not open the second time. It may take a day. It may take a week. It may take a month. But listen, my friend, you keep on knocking. You keep on knocking. You keep on knocking. And finally God says, hey, come on in. I see you didn't quit. You didn't give up. And you continue to trust in me. Some of you just got to keep on knocking. Some of you haven't knocked long enough. Some of you need to get serious about your knock. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And some of you, some of y'all are getting like people. Hallelujah. Some, some of you need to like. Open up! It's a police. <laughs> And he keep going on. Praise the Lord. If I study it. <laughs> you gotta knock at that door. You gotta knock at that door. Don't quit, don't give up just because you didn't get the answer you wanted the first time. God said, I want you to knock. Did you how bad you want? Some of you, you need a door of healing to open to you. Keep on knocking. Get the need what you need. Some of you need the door of finances to open for you. Keep on knocking. Just keep on knocking at the door. Until the door opens. There are people tell you you're foolish. There are people tell you you're wasting your time. There are people tell you no one's gonna open up their door. You say, no. I'm asking. I'm seeking. Now I'm gonna keep on. Let's take our five confessions regarding the principles of an open door. 
Number one, say this. I confess, I confess that, Jesus that Jesus has opened, has opened doors, doors for me, for me that, cannot be closed. that cannot be closed. Number two, say I confess, I confess that, I deserve that I deserve the type of door, the type of door I'm, facing. I'm facing. I am facing. Number three, say that I confess, I confess I understand I understand that there are some doors, there are some doors which are both that which are both destructive, destructive and, dangerous and dangerous for me. For me. So of course I confess. I confess that when God that when God opens a door, opens a door, opposition, opposition and adversary, and adversary may appear. May appear. You no know, I confess. I confess that hard, that hard and persistent knocking, and persistent knocking may be required. May be required to open, to open, to open some doors. Some doors. Let's take our prayer permission. Ready? Let's pray. Father, Father in, the in the name of Jesus, Jesus I, thank I thank you that Jesus, Jesus has opened, opened doors for me, me that cannot, cannot be closed. I, I thank you that, that I must discern the type, type of door I am facing because, because there, there are some doors, doors which are both destructive and, and dangerous to me. me. I, thank I thank you that when you, you open the door, door opposition and adversaries may appear which, which may require some, some hard and persistent knocking. As, As I, I realize, realize this, I understand, I say, I, say, I, I would experience God's grace for an open door in 2024. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated, my friend, you watch this broadcast. Wow, I'm talking about principles of open doors that you have. And Jesus is the door. He's the door to the sheep. He's the door to the fold. He's the door to your life. And to get where you need to be, Jesus says, won't you come through that door? Because see, if you don't accept Jesus through that door, so there's some destructive doors that are waiting for you. The door of fear, the door of procrastination, the door I'm not good enough. See, all those doors are waiting for you. But go through Jesus who is the door. He says, I come that you may have life in abundance before the it all goes. And you can receive Jesus as the door to your life today. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, there may be some adversaries there waiting, but you'll be affected because he's gonna be there with you. And so the first door is the door of salvation. Jesus has come that you may have life in abundance to the full and overcome, but you gotta accept him as your savior and Lord. If you've never done that, just ask him to come into your life right now where you are. He wants to be the door to your life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So you receive Jesus. Secondly, maybe you did receive Jesus. You was you become a believer, but you know what? You're not a belonger. You're not belonging to a local church. And we used to say that in the Baptist church, when the preachers finished preaching, he would stand and says, the doors of the church are now open. That's to a new life. We call the church the ark of safety. And again, if you're going to be a believer, it's for you to be a belonger. So you can, again, be a part of what God is doing for that door. Maybe you just need rededication or something. I don't know. But Jesus wants to be that door. And so here's the thing about it is. Jesus says over in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He says, If any man will hear my voice, I'll come in and I'll suffer him in with me. So listen, the handle is not on the outside, it's on the inside. What does that mean, preacher? That means you gotta let him in. He won't force him away. But the question is, will you trust him enough to open up the door? See, that's true between people who are saved and not saved. People who are saved say, you know what? I'll open up the door. People who are not saved, I don't trust him to open up the door. I'll stay behind this door. I'll do my own thing. I'll do what I think is good. I'll think it was right. No. He can't do anything to you open the door. Then once the other day, if you said, Pastor Simmons, I need to be saved. Or Pastor Simmons, I need to be a part of this church. The door is for you is open as well. It's everybody. So there's a phone number you call, here we go, 615-223-0420. Call that number, leave your name, your telephone number, email address, and someone from my ministerial staff will get back in contact with you and give you more information about Jesus being the open door. 
and then just we're going to pray for you, we're going to love on you, we're going to encourage you, but we're going to show you the benefits of going through the door of Jesus. Would you do that today? It's for you. Praise the Lord. Father, I just want to thank you for those who heard this word. I pray it's been a blessing to them, Father God, that yes, Christmas open door is so vital for our lives. Thank you to Jesus, it's an open door, and we'll go through that door, and we'll be effective. And we'll be the blessing you call us to be in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But listen, I pray you enjoy that word and uh, let it resonate with your spirit. And uh, thank God for being a part of what God's doing here at Hopper Faith Christian Center. Now, we want to continue on to worship the Lord. It is now time for we're going to participate in the Lord's Supper. See, by Jesus being in the door, he made a way for us to fellowship with him. And that's what it is. We fellowship with Jesus through taking Holy Communion. Through the bread, which is broken by our bodies, and the cup, which is shedding our blood. And the Bible says, listen, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And so you're forgiven, it's through the blood of Jesus. You heal through the body of Jesus. And so go get your bread, go get your cup, and we want you to uh, fellowship with us, Jesus. Why? Because he is the door. Hallelujah. And he wants things for you in your life. And so go ahead and get that, and, and we're just going to take Holy Communion and Communion. Bible says, "On night was Jesus was prayed, he took bread, and as he had given thanks, he blessed it, and said, take this, this is my body, this is broken for you. He said, now, often as you do this, do this remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took the cup and said, this is the New Testament in my body. As long as you do that, you do it in remembrance of me. And so we remember Jesus as the door to our lives. We remember Jesus as an opportunity for everything he had in store for us. That's why he's the door. And he has created an open door. So if you ask, it'll be given. If you keep seeking, you'll find. But even if you don't do that, now it's time for you to knock and be persistent in your knocking. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We love you. Praise the Lord Jesus. He makes it all possible. All that we do for the kingdom of God. And for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, he paid it all. All to him, our Lord. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Jesus, he makes it all possible. He is that door for your life. Okay, that's what we're doing. Uh, you'll take him, take your sin line, wait for you. Just wait for the opportunity. Yeah. Wait in the Lord. Where did you to do that? But you gotta trust you. Trust his word, who he is, and what he said, what he commanded, what he promised, what he did on the cross. That's about Jesus. Thank you, buddy. So now we come to this holy moment. Holy communion with communion with Jesus. We take the bread, which is for our healing. The Bible says, by his stripes, we were healed, which means we are healed. Mm -hmm. Let us now eat. And now the cup for the shedding of his blood. Forgiveness of all our sins. Let us now drink. Father, we thank you. Thank you. You made Jesus be that door for us. And that allows you to know you the same. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise amen. the Lord. But thank you again for your obedience and participating in the Lord's Supper. And I know you at home. You are truly blessed by that. And through the word and through the fellowship of the Spirit of God, Holy Communion. And we love you. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, it is now opportunity for prosperity. Hallelujah. If you need an offer, I'm below here. Raise your hand in the House of Faith Christian Center. If you're at home, you can participate.
in an opportunity period, we love to give. We love to give the Lord some money. We are sowing to the kingdom of God. We're not trying to pay God anything. We're just trying to say, Lord, we thank you. We honor you. And we glorify your name. And so, again, uh, you want to give House of Faith Christian Center. There are several ways that you can give. The first way that you can give is through our text giving. And there's a fine House of Faith Christian Center there on your app. And there will be a truly blessing to you. The second way you give is through online giving, which is one of the most popular ways that you can give. And uh, you just follow the information, houseoffaithchristiancenter.org. And uh, find where it says give and donate. There's follow information. And uh, again, you want to give, you're going to get uh, through the online giving, uh, your credit card, and also your debit card. And I think everything is secure. Praise the Lord. We don't give you information out of any third party whatsoever. You know, praise the Lord. And just give us God and bless you. And uh, truly be truly grateful to God. And third way that you can give is through checks and money orders. You want to send at the House of Faith Christian Center. It's Post Office Box 985. Post Office Box 985. That's in Smyrna, Tennessee. And uh, you can just give that. We greatly appreciate it. Or if you're going to do online giving, you can give to, I'm mean, excuse me, to a cash app. Uh, dollar sign RDS Ministries and let that be a blessing for you as well. So remember, the offering that leaves your hand and never leaves the earth, and you're giving good ground. Are you trying to thank God? No, you can't thank God. But you're thanking Him for being that door through Jesus. That's what you're saying. And you're grateful. Praise the Lord. And that uh, we just thank God for the opportunity to give. And we love to be able to bless the kingdom of God. And we thank God for all of our friends, all of our members, all of our partners, our sons and daughters, all our friends who want to sow to the house of faith, Christian Center in the name of Jesus. Uh, we also a missionary church. Uh, we give. We support the mission uh, over in the Congo in, in, at, with uh, Pastor Jim and uh, his congregation. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, he has a congregation of people who love the Lord. Uh, it's Jasper Stones and the Angelical Church over in the Congo. And then he also has a ministry called Hands of Love Ministry to a training center to training uh, disciples for the Lord Jesus. And so we do so into other ministries as well. And so what you're doing that, you'll be a part of what God is doing here at Alpha Bay Christian Center. Praise the Lord. And so let's go ahead and hold up our offerings right now. And that we just going to pray blessings upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and honor you for our offerings. We thank you for this time of giving. Uh, Father, we just love to give. We just love to sow, Father. Why? Because you are the door. And we thank you, Father. You open up opportunities that we continue to ask, continue to seek, and continue to knock what you have for us. In the name of Jesus, Father. Thank you for protection and provision for us, Father God. Thank you that we can trust you. That whenever sin lies at the door, Father, you are there to guard us and protect us, Father. And you open up doors. We love and we honor you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But we want to thank you again for sharing and giving uh, of the Lord's money. And we know it truly will be a blessing to us. And I want to tell you, every seed you sow, you're sowing in good ground in the House of Faith Christian Center. And we believe, God, that you'll get your harvest. Praise the Lord. And uh, listen, you'll make a difference that will never, ever be taken away from you in the name of Jesus. Well, listen, we've had an awesome time here at the House of Faith Christian Center. And listen, I want to thank you uh, for our Facebook family and friends and for watching that and delayed broadcast. Thank you for taking out your busy schedule to watch this word. And again, I want to invite you to come and worship with the House of Faith Christian Center. We're located at 2001 Motlow Boulevard uh, in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. That's on the corner of Motlow Boulevard and Sam Ridley Parkway. Listen, our worship service begins every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Proceeded by uh, 8 30 by prayer. And then just come on out and have a wonderful time. And I tell you, listen, we're going to love on you. We're going to encourage you. We're going to tell you we're glad to see you. We're going to give you the word of God in love. And so come on, be a part of what God is doing here at House of Faith Christian Center on Sunday morning. And it truly be a blessing. If by chance you just can't make it, then you can come and you can watch our broadcast live at 9 30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and about 3 30 p.m. over in our friends over in the Congo in Shasha. And truly be a blessing for you in the name of Jesus. And just continue to pray for our ministry. So again, we've had an awesome time and I praise God for you. So again, I'm Pastor Ronald D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. In House of Faith Christian Center, we have a threefold vision that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. At House of Faith Christian Center, we have five purposes. There are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. At House of Faith Christian Center, we are minister of excellence, 
effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, located in beautiful Spring, Tennessee. And my friends, I want to leave you these familiar words. Remember that Jesus is Lord and continue to show compassion in your action. And we'll see you next time. God bless you and have a great day in Jesus. Bye-bye.